going on everybody come on in come on in we're just gonna wait for the homie to come on uh, welcome to conversations of the heart today we'll, we'll be talking about loss and grief oh my man's already in here Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, my brother? Yeah, good. Your camera, your camera sideways, bro. Oh, sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta all turn right, it. Hold on one second, all right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So once uh, once he gets his camera straight, then we'll come right back uh, with him. Danny, what's up? Lenny, what's up? <sighs> yeah. So t today we're gonna be getting into a topic. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure a lot of us can definitely um, relate to. It's on loss and grief. You know, so we're just going to unpack a lot of just different things to, to today as soon as he comes back, you know, um, and go from there. Lo Loso, Nelly, what up? All right, there he is. Hold on a sec. Let's get him back in here. There he is. All right, we back, we back, we back, we back. <laughs> we, we are back. Uh, sir, uh, appreciate you doing this, man. Uh, you know, first of all, let me just introduce you. So this is Jamal Williams. Uh, he is an actor. Um, all around solid, good brother. You know, um, we met working in nonprofit at that lovely place. Lovely and, place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and we've and we just been solid ever since. Um, he's a good brother, solid brother. Uh, loves the youth too, you know. So he's an actor. So I, I just want you to tell my audience, um, you know, where they can find you, what your next projects are, and things like that. So right now, I'm actually working on like a one man show. Um, I'm making that announcement actually on the uh, on your your live right now. Um, nice. You can uh, find me on Instagram. You can <laughs> find me on Facebook. Um, I'm mm. doing a lot of self work right now, but at the same time, I'm doing I'm working on my one man show. So um, mm -hmm. look out for that. Um, but yeah, just hit me up on Instagram, Facebook. I'm always willing to talk. I'm a real open guy. So, yeah. Definitely, man. So, um, so today is, you know, the topic is uh loss and grief. Um, I know this is something that has hit home for you this year. Absolutely. Um, it it hit home for for me about three and a half years ago. You know, so I don't know how we did this. I don't know how we got on and we said that we're gonna do this. Uh we, we got on the <laughs> phone one day. We got on the phone one day. And it was just like, all right, we got to do this. So first of all, I, yeah. So first of all, I appreciate you for doing this. I applaud you for doing this um, and being open and vulnerable about it. Because uh, I don't think I have talked about it in public either. Um, I'm not sure that you have. I can pretty much probably tell you. You probably haven't either. You know what happened, right? You know what <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so the technical term like the definition of grief is just it's, it's a deep sorrow right so it's just, especially when it's caused by death you know of a loved one right so yeah. you know so let's start with you um you kind of had a a double header you know unfortunately yeah. so you lost your father you lost your father about what four months four yeah, months ago it was on april 12th april 12th so yeah so it's about four months so, right and then go ahead yeah tell us so my dad um during the middle of um, the quarantine, um, yeah. my dad had a stroke, um, mm. and he had a stroke on a Friday night. Um, mm. the crazy thing, I spoke to him the day before, but he had a stroke on a Friday night, and he was in the hospital, and on that Sunday morning, I think it was Easter, if I'm not mistaken, um, is when he actually transitioned. Um, wow. And, you know, as we spoke, and, you know, Terrence and I, we're going to do a lot of, you know, reiterating conversations that we already had. But um, yeah. as we spoke, um, I was shell-shocked by the whole thing. 
So a lot of my friends didn't know. A lot of people that, you know, from my church didn't know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just didn't know because I'd be honest with you, man, I just didn't know. Like, I couldn't process this, that this actually happened because I just spoke, yeah. to, you know, my dad and I were talking about um, the last conversation we were talking about Tiger King, you know, and talking about the, <laughs> that know, was the that, thing. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it was very casual conversation we had and just for somebody just to be that alive in that moment. And, you know, two days later, it's just not here anymore. I couldn't yeah. process it. So to even to be honest with you, a lot of my friends didn't even know about it. You know, you knew about it because I knew, you know, we had that, connection there but yeah. you know, it was it was something that i was just shocked i was completely shell shocked and then mm -hmm. at one point and we'll talk about this a little bit more i think um one of the stages of grief is denial so mm -hmm. that was a huge component for me um mm -hmm. acting like it didn't happen you know um, wow. and specifically because you know i live in new york my dad lived down in maryland so it was something that I could, you know, just separate from. And I can say, you know, dad's down in Maryland right now. So I don't have to even think about what's going on there because we'll see each other, you know, in a week or two. So wow. it's like you kind of recondition your brain to deal with grief. And that's not a healthy tactic, by the way, but it's just something we do. It's like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, to make sure that we're able to cope with different things that's happening. Because like, I definitely, like I said, I was shocked by the whole thing. And, like, it wasn't real to me. It wasn't real to me. And I'm pretty sure that you could kind of identify with that same thing, specifically somebody that you've seen, you know, speaking to. And yeah. I, and our relationship, my dad, our relationship was fluid. So it wasn't like one of those, you know, a dad you see on Christmas and that's it. Like, you know, I'm texting him about something funny I seen on Instagram or, you know, send him a meme. So it was a very, uh, it, our relationship had evolved from just a father and son into something else. Right. So we're like, you know, right. it, it was a different type of relationship. And my right. grandfather just passed a month ago. Um, he had cancer yeah, you... for a while. Um, and right. Yeah, so, and, and the sad thing is this. When he passed, it was so much going on, because I'm still reeling from my dad, that when my granddad right. died, I'm like, this too? So right. it's really back trying to, to process everything, and you're numb at that point. And maybe it was a good thing. So I don't know. I'm still, you know, I'm in the thick of it right now, brother. Yeah, so I think that, like, with me, it was a little different. Um you know, I, I got home from, from, from me. I remember coming home late and, you know, my mom is like, oh, you know, like your dad's not feeling well. You know, I think we should probably take him to, uh, you know, of the hospital. Like, like he's really not feeling well. So I, I said, like, oh, all right, fine. You know, it's no problem. And so, you know, I get to the, you know, we drive to the hospital, you know, of course, emergency room. We there all night. Um, and um, the very next day, you know, the doctors. Now, to get the, the, the back story, my dad was sick. Mm -hmm. Um you know, but um, so we we get there and the doctors are telling us some positive things. You know, that it's like, okay, you know what? So we're gonna do this, 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 and you know what? So he should probably be gonna make a recovery. You know, because we're gonna we're gonna try just A, B, C, D, and we have a plan in place. Um, you know, because he had various different ailments. So I said, oh, all right. So this is pretty much good news. And um, so at that point, my mom is exhausted. Um, so I take her home, you know, just for an hour. I said, you know, like, let them do what they got to do. Let, you know, let them settle in. I'm going to take you home, take like an hour nap. Um, so we, so I could just bring you right, right back and get you some food and all that stuff. Cool. So we came back to the hospital. So once we got back to the hospital, he looked worse than what we brought him in. Like, like he was very lethargic and stuff like that. And, and he was just out of it. So I, that was very concerning. Um, so Long story short, you know, we're, we're there in the afternoon towards the, of the night. They switch doctors. The night doctors come in, and night doctors are like, hey, listen, um, do, do you have, like, any other family? And I'm like, yeah, my, you know, my brother, he's in at Atlanta. And, and they're like, yeah, you might want to bring him, you know, tell him, he, if you can, get your flight very quickly to get here. And this is, like, probably about 4 o'clock. So I'm like, uh, okay. So I call my, my brother. So he was able to get on, on the last flight here. So he gets to us about nine o'clock. Um, so about eight o'clock, they come back in and they say, so is he on his way? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay, because we don't think that he's going to make it through the night. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but what, but what happened to the, the whole plans? Like what happened to like, like the day doctors told me like, like A, B, C, D, the whole list of plans that we can do. And, and they were like, no, um, she's septic inside. Like, it's not, it's not looking good. 
and he's not going to make it through the night. So that's what shocked. Like that part is, I think, what shocked me, um, and and my mom. You know, and I was just like, you know, like what happened? Like it was just from positivity to just straight boom. You know, um, and then, you know, once my my brother came, we had to give him uh the news and things like that. And it's been an interesting ride. And that's been about three three and a half years ago. It's going on four years in October, um, and. My as far as me, my story with grief is a little bit different. Um, I think um, the what you told me about the way that you're doing it and how you're doing it, I think I commend you. I think I wish I took, I could have taken that route mm-hmm. um, to attack it right away. Yeah. Um, um, but I felt that I couldn't, you know. Um, so these last four months, I'll get back to me. But these last four months, you know, how have you been coping? Um, so like, as you know, I've been in therapy, man, and mm-hmm. in therapy, like intense therapy and just, um, really being able to connect with spirit and mm-hmm. really just, honestly, I, I had to recognize. So here's the thing. When something like this happened, you have to recognize, like, you have a different life now. Your life as you knew it no longer exists. So it's mm-hmm. really establishing new norms for yourself, establishing different things that you can do differently. Um, specifically, mm-hmm. Because it's specifically because if you have a relationship as close as we, my brothers now with my father, um, that was a part of our normal, you know, that was Mm -hmm. something we, you know, what daddy doing, that kind of thing. So you really have to recalibrate your entire life and set off on that new normal. So for me, therapy um, has really helped me with that um, and getting my feelings out. And honestly, to be honest with you, I've done more work on myself after since this has happened that I have done my whole life, you know, and really have you know, really deconstructed myself, see who Jamal really is, and really just did mm-hmm. a lot of self-work. So I really try to um, look at the positive of this whole thing. And that's something positive, I would say, like the immediate positive that came out. I've really done work on myself. And a lot mm-hmm. of things I've been doing, like, for the past God knows how many years that I felt like I've been working at that point, it really has not been working. And so I've seen right. a significant change in myself since that time that I really started doing work and therapy. So therapy has helped me tremendously. And you know, as everybody, mm-hmm. everybody know, I have, you know, a million brothers. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, one of my brothers actually came to New York to visit me now, you know, because we kind of just, again, supporting each other and making sure we're holding each other up through this whole process. So mm. that's what I've been doing, man. Therapy, 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 prayer, 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 and, you know, supporting mm-hmm. my family and, you know, my loved ones. And, you know, that's a big thing. And then talking to people like you, man, um, you know, when it first happened, again, I was shocked. But, you know, mm-hmm. we have had our conversations. I know that's something that we both have, have experienced. Yeah. So, yeah, just having a good village, man, around you, that's the biggest thing. And mm-hmm. I really like people that don't have siblings or people that don't have that support. I really, mm-hmm. you know, my, my heart goes out to them because, you know, my village has been my rock this whole time, this whole experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, boy, Lenny in the comments said, people want to know, you know, but how do you tell them about your loss? And that's... And a lot, and that's a hundred percent true. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Because um, people want to, people want to know what to say, right? Yeah. And a lot of times, it's just like the one thing I've learned throughout this whole journey mm-hmm. is people want to know what they say, but a lot of times they don't know what to say or how to really say it, right? And sometimes they come at you and and now uh, tell their story about grief, and a lot of times that doesn't make you feel any better, mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. it's it's completely different it's completely um separate and it also and from what i've i've learned is that it takes away from their story they agree so so if i so if i tell you like and if now if i tell you oh well you know what well my daddy died so i'm you know i know how it is too now that takes that off for you and it's like yeah but it's supposed to be about you yeah you know what i'm saying it's not supposed to be just about me talking about my stuff you know what i'm saying just to try to find something to relate to you you know what i'm saying that's not for a lot of people that that doesn't help you you know (laughs) um you know so for me when when i went through it or when it first happened this is where our stories kind of go this way so you you immediately and this is amazing um and you go right into therapy right and for me i went into protective mode you know because of my mom you know, because she was kind of just left alone and she was in a bad place. You know what I'm saying? So I went into protective mode for her and completely forgot about myself. Um, just trying to be there to kind of 
be her everything. Mm -hmm. um, now, I wanted to be her protector because she was here in New York, you know, and I was her her the, her, like, her therapist, you know, her the, the, the rock now that she had to cry on, you know what I mean, to, to lean on, to vent on, to be angry with, like all those things, you know, I had to be. And so I completely forgot about myself. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't think about it. I didn't even think twice. It wasn't a thing. I felt like, you know what, I could take it, you know, put the Superman cape on it, and I'm good. Yeah. But, you know, to be truthful, it wasn't until this, this um, I think during the pandemic was when um, I kind of got a chance to kind of be the self because, you know, she moved to Atlanta with my brother, mm -hmm. changed the scenery, um, so she's doing better and doing amazing. And so while I was here during this whole pandemic, when I actually just sometimes lay down, everything started to kind of just hit. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you think that, you know what? Oh, I'm just going to just put it off, put it off, put it off. And it's going to magically just disappear mm -hmm. because you've been doing so well. Yeah. You know, and, and you've been managing um, with your grief and things like that. But when I tell you, like, when I finally sometimes, and this, and this is three and a half years later I'm talking about, yeah. it hits. And it hits in different places completely. And you learn, like, oh, so this is not just going to just get swept under the rug. You weren't doing as good as you thought you were. As you thought you and, were. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's, like, it's great that you were the protector and you were there for the family, for your mom, and, 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 that's, and that was needed. But you forgot about yourself. Yeah. And the memories don't go away. The hurt doesn't go away. You know what I'm saying? It's just waiting until you can finally just take it all in. You know what I'm saying? And I realized that I didn't even, I personally didn't even cry since the funeral. Mm. Since mm. the actual day of the funeral, mm. I didn't cry once. I cried once. Yeah. And after that, it, it went into straight, like, shut down, let's go mode, mom, I got you, lockstep, and, and that was it. Yeah. You know, so um, hindsight, of course, is 2020. Yeah. So, you know, you look back and you say, man, I, I should have definitely started therapy sooner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because be, being able to try to take on your grief and somebody else's. It was impossible. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it was possible, but it does more, it does more harm than good. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's just. It's just different. So, you know, so from 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 for me, that's what I say, I always say I salute you for actually just kind of getting it done right away. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I, I do think that's probably like the best way to do it. Um, so you know, wait, hold on a second. Oh, Danny says, I know grief hits us all differently. So how do you guys manage grief with your partners, close family, friends? Go ahead. Okay, and then so, I'll go. Um, so what I, one thing I want to touch, I'm just touch on that real quick. Um, mm -hmm. With that right there, it's one of those things that you almost, it's, it's, it's a weird space because mm -hmm. you understand as a man, you understand that you're grieving. It's something that happened to you, right? But then you mm -hmm. have somebody else with you that you almost feel a sense of guilt that they have to be there for you. And you don't want to put all your stuff on them, so it's almost like you start to draw away. It's it's a it's a weird thing. So to be honest with you, to answer that question, I don't think I handled that the right way. Um, more so because I didn't know how to. You know, a lot of times right. if you don't have the tools to do something, you don't know. Now yeah. therapy, I kind of figured out how to navigate that a little bit better. But um, the way I did it was I felt a sense of guilt because I'm like, this is all my stuff and me putting it on somebody else and it becomes their bags too. I yep. didn't want to do that. I'm a type of person that, you know, I handle things on my own, which isn't always good, but I handle no. things internally and then I pop out when I'm finished with it, you know? So I kind of, um, I, I had to make sure, and I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to um, be open for help and be mm -hmm. open for um, people to assist me. And, you know, because people, the my people knew my dad also, you know, so the people yeah, that are yep. even helping me, you know, that's their grief too. So, um, again, I didn't handle it the right way, but I would say uh, just make mm -hmm. sure that you're being open to receive that love and help from people. Right. And so when it comes to family and friends, you know, I think for me, 
Um, the, the reality is a lot of them don't know how to, I think, to help you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, they yeah. don't, because they don't understand. Yeah. So a lot of times, there, and for other people, there, there's an expectation um, of the closest people. And, and I'm not talking about acquaintances, but, like, your closest, whether it's your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your best friend, whoever it is, to know what to say and to know what to do. And they don't. They have no idea. So a lot of them evade the issue altogether. And now you're mad because you're like, how could they not know what to say or know what to do? Because yeah. if it were me, I would do I this. I would do this. But you and, and I struggle with that, too. I'm not going to lie. You know, I've struggled with that because I, the expectation of somebody to, especially, especially somebody close, is to say, hey, they're supposed to know. Um, but sometimes it's awkward for them and they don't know um, how to react, what to say, or what to do because a lot of people don't know what it's like to lose somebody that close. No. You know what I mean? They might have lost, a, you know, somebody, you know, and, and I'm not comparing grief, but, you know, because you're not supposed to do it either, but it's like losing a parent is different and a lot of people don't know how to handle those things or to, to navigate those waters of conversation. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's best for people just not to say anything at all, uh, um, you know, versus say, saying the wrong thing or, or doing the wrong thing, and then you're going to be mad all over again anyway. So, yeah. um, and, and, you and know, to, and to go I know. To that point, um, I know I was one of those people that was somebody, because my dad, that's the first person, like, ever in my family that was super close to me that, you know, passed. Um, because, I mean, I guess it can't get closer than a parent. But I remember mm -hmm. um, people that I know um, telling me, you know, that they had a, they lost a parent, and I identified because it was times I'm, it was. I said, you know, oh man, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't yeah. know actually how to really um, impart something into them after they tell me something heavy like that. So I understand mm -hmm. completely when people just don't know how to react or they don't know which angle to take in that conversation and trying to be helpful or supportive because that's one of those things you it's, it's buried you might run into a person that they want support of, or might run into a person that like me for a second that i'm like let me get myself together alone and then we can you know rock and so it's right it's really you have to feel out a person honestly you really do but i think yeah. also yeah. um being present is really important and just mm -hmm. letting the person know if i need you you're there you know, so just be present. Right. Um, but something that right. you were talking about and I really want to get on um, mm -hmm. regarding just us expressing those things like about how we don't want to talk about these things and we don't want right. to even tell people that this stuff happened. And do you, mm -hmm. uh, it's a question for you. Do you think this is a thing about, is this human nature? Is this men? Is this how black men operate because we don't necessarily handle grief the right way? Um, mm -hmm. What do, you, what do you think about that? Um, I think for, for, for black men, you know, we have a lot of ego, too. And we, ha we have a lot of times expressing um, our emotion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. or, not, or, or not expressing it in a healthy way. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times people, something will happen like this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to go to the club. You know, or, I'll, or I'm going to go get this bottle. I'm going to smoke this weed. Or I'm going to do something. I'm going to find a vice, right, yeah. to kind of substitute for expression um, because I don't want to deal with these type of emotions and, and things like that. So that's why I think it's so important that we're doing this, you know, yeah. um, and, 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 and publicly, I mean, because we, we've done this on, on the phone, you know, and that's amazing, you know, but I think it's, it's really dope that, that we can unpack this publicly um, because I think it's needed for people to see that it's okay to get therapy. As, as yeah. a man, it's okay to go get therapy. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing feminine about that. You know what I'm saying? It is life. And we have to be able to say, hey, when I can't really carry this cross, I have to go get help. I can't just pray about it and do nothing. Yeah. Because sometimes that, that's in the culture too. Just pray about it. Everything going to be all right. And we and do no work. You know what I'm saying? But the good, the good world says that faith without works is completely dead. You know what I'm that's saying? True. So if you're going to pray about it, then pray to, to find the right therapist, to pray to find the right tools, you know what I'm saying, to to help you along with your journey. But you can't just pray about it and do nothing, you know. And I think a lot of that, that's a lot of that in our community, too, 
It's just, oh, we just, we just going to pray about it, talk to Jesus about it, and everything is just going to be A-OK. And, and it's just like, hey, no, yeah. that is the wrong thing. And you know another then, thing, too, we're taught mm -hmm. to tell our business. So Woo! We what happens in this house too. stays in this house. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So, you know, we as a community, we have a, a covered wagon syndrome. And, you know, that goes into another reason why we don't go to therapy, because it's like you go to therapy, you tell what's going on in this house. Somebody show CPS show up at the door. It's going to be some problem. <laughs> so you know, right, you're right. trained a certain way when it comes to telling outside people our business. Um, I think specifically for us and the, you know, Southerners, and I think it's black people everywhere, but specifically yeah, in, in, in my culture, that Southern culture, it's church is so heavy that mm -hmm. therapy is almost seen as seen as something like it's worldly. Yes. You, know, you out here doing other stuff, oh. you talking to them people about your business. You need to talk to God about it. And, and that's it. And so it's that. So it's so many things coupled on top of, you know, being a black man, black man, we don't like to express our emotions in that way, even especially something that you really can't control your emotions when it comes to death, because that's mm -hmm. something super final. But mm -hmm. you have that. Then on top of that, being a, black person from the south and you know you don't tell your business yeah and then the stigma <laughs> yeah. around therapy and then more than anything people don't want to seem as clean crazy right so it's kind of like right. i'm not doing therapy i'm not crazy i'm not doing i'm not going through it i'm fine and people and people have really got to understand that you realize that it's really only about things of the emotion that they say don't go telling your business because if that was the case it's like yo if you break your knee your, your mama don't tell you, hey, listen, don't go tell him doctor your business. No, nah, she's going to tell you. She's going to take it. She's going to take it to the doctor, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, but it's only about things that we're supposed to express emotionally, mm -hmm. right? Then it's like, don't tell nobody. But it's like, where, you know, nah. You know what I'm saying? You go to the doctor, right? Yeah. You go to the dentist, hopefully. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know, you go to physical therapy when you need it. You go to all these, these different things when you need it. But yeah. when it comes to you know, your uh, emotional and your mental health is like, nah, we don't do it. Don't talk to nobody. Just talk to Jesus. Close your eyes and go to bed and talk to God about it. And he's going to make everything all right. Make and it it's just right like, well. hey, yeah, you know, and it's just like, we, 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 we've got to do more. And yeah. women have been, and women have been up on this for a long time. They've been going to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Go, they've been on it. And, and it's just, we, we have to come to a point as men that we really have to raise the bar. You know, for ourselves and for our own mental health and emotional wellness. You know, so you know, I think more talks like this have have to happen. Um, and this is super important, man. And like, even going mm -hmm. what you're saying about women, like they're aware of all the, their emotions. They know mm -hmm. what's happening. You know, they know mm -hmm. when this is happening. This means this. A lot of times with men, specifically us, it's like the only emotion we really can identify is anger. And mm -hmm. so when when somebody dies, when you're in grief that pain is always transmuted into like anger. So that's why you see people like shooting at funerals and you know, because you, you in some weird space and you don't know, mm -hmm. that maybe this pain is your hurt, your feelings are hurt. But being mm -hmm. that we don't have these tools to really um, redirect that into something else, mm -hmm. we just know anger. So that's what we go into mm -hmm. when we heard about something. And so, so this, these conversations need to happen specifically with men because they need to see stuff like this. Yeah. And we have to share different tools. Like, yo, I'm, this book right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yo, if you're going through something with grief, listen, this book right here, take a screenshot of it, order it, get it. You know, it's not, it's not my book, so I, I'm not, no, no shameless plug for me. <laughs> but this book right here is an eye opener um, when it comes to the, that, that, that grief and loss. Like, it, it takes you through a whole, like, four different parts, man, of just the myths about grief. And really how to handle grief um, in a healthy and positive way. Um, it's an amazing tool um, that I started reading last week. And I was just like, whoa, like, I, I wish I got this like three years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, if anybody, you know, needs the name of this book, it's it's called It's Okay That You're Not Okay. Mm. Um, oh, she said, can you please pin please? All right. Let, let me pin that. <clears throat> All right, cool. All right, so I'm just going to pin that now. 
Um, cool. In that right there, there it is. Um, so yeah, so so if if anybody's going through some, please please pick that up. Um, it it is amazing. It's an amazing tool. All right. So Danny said during this difficult time, a lot of people don't have insurance. What other suggestions would you guys recommend to help people who are still dealing with grief? Um, you want to take that? So I'll, I'll get on that. So one thing I sure. found in the beginning was online, and obviously you have to do your research, but there are a lot of forums with people that are going through the same thing, that have experienced mm -hmm. death of a parent, death of a child. The great thing about the Internet is it's something for everybody out there. Yeah. So what's more mm -hmm. so kind of sifting through that? Um, and there's actually free counseling out here. Um, yeah. I'm going to send Terrence that information a little later, but it's it's free a free counseling session, maybe one or two or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. That's out here. So it's a lot of different resources. And again, even if you don't have that, speaking just speaking out loud about whatever you feel is cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's something that I know for me it helped a lot um, because the problem of keeping thoughts in your head it becomes a circus. And you uh -huh. start thinking, and, it, and it's, a, it's a continuing. So speaking mm -hmm. out loud, even talking to a trusted friend, just saying whatever it is you have to say, that's something that's helped me even before I went to therapy, because I went to therapy maybe a week or two later. But um, speaking out loud, talking to people, and again, leaning on your family members um, is something that has been huge for me. Like, like I told you, my brother came to New York to spend some time with me, because it's like, you know, we, we rocking with each other right now, you know, because we're going through the same thing. And um, so that's been a big help, speaking out loud mm -hmm. and, and looking for resources online. But you go ahead. Yeah, no, man, I, I think that's absolutely true. And it's also, um, they have a lot of um, grief um, groups yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that are free, that are free. And even some that will have just in individual sessions. It could be at your local church or nonprofit um, that you could look up that, that gives free resources for grief. I think that like grief is one of the few uh, uh, things that um, that people can get something you know can, can get some type of help for for free yeah. um so so um so definitely just just try those outlets and, and go to support groups um if you can uh youtube um you know youtube has a lot of uh videos on on, on grief pick of uh, uh, picking up this book um is an amazing start um so you know that's so if you know somebody if you don't know what to tell somebody you know that's going through something give them that book yeah yeah Give them that book. Um, and, and, and also, it's very important to be there for the person who's grieving after the funeral. Mm -hmm. Like, after all the, after all the action you know, and after all the stuff is... That's when they need somebody the most because things get very dark and very quiet yeah. after that time. Yeah. And, and, and normally... It's like a rush when people like when something first happens. It's a rush and people want to oh help and and buy food and and that's all appreciated. But it's after that is when that person is going to need you the absolute most because that's when the darkness really sets in. Mm -hmm. um, and they and, and they're going to need that phone call. They're going to need that that text. You know what I'm saying? They're going to need that sort of the crying on um, because it gets dark and and it gets dark very very fast. You know what I'm saying? But what happens is normally after the funeral and, I, and after the repass, everything falls. It's that's it. It's, it's kind of like it goes back to normal business as usual. For and them. you're stuck in that. Yeah. For, yeah. For them, of yeah. course. And you're stuck in that dark place and nobody's around. Yeah. You know, and you know what I'm saying? So, you know, definitely um, if you can't, if you really can't do anything or, or, or don't know what to say, it's just show up. Just let your presence be known. It's like what you said earlier, you know, like your, like your presence matters. Even if, if it's not physical, you know what I mean? That, that, that text, you know, how are you doing? Like, how's your soul doing? I have a, I, I have a friend on, on live. She, well, I, I, and I will forever say this. She, she the only one. She be like, yo, T, how's your soul doing? Mm. And, and that's a different type of question than how you doing. Yeah. Because it yeah. forces you to, to think about how, like, that might, Damn, because you know, you say how you doing? It's like, oh, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? But when somebody says, "Yo, T, how's your soul doing?" It's like uh, I gotta stop and think about that for a second because, damn, like, how is my soul doing yeah. on this lovely Monday afternoon? I don't really know. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It forces you to think about that. 
So, a, so asking different types of questions instead of instead of the normal, just hey man, how you doing? Good. All right, cool. Bye. Yeah. Like you know, and it's just that's business as, as as normal. Ask them different questions. You know, um. So shout out to Stone. Thank you for that. Um, I'll forever tell that story um, of, of what you do. Um, but um, you know, so that so those are things that you, that you could always do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, but it's 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 a very interesting time, you know, especially for for you, um, yeah. because you went through the pandemic, right? And we're going through a lot of the social, you know, justice and inequalities and and, and things like that. And then you have a death in the family. You know what I'm saying? And it's just you know, so I salute you uh -huh, like 100%, bro, um, because it's not easy to go through all of those things and then lose a parent in the middle yeah. Of, yeah. of all of those things. But, um, but Terrence, you know what I can say about that real quick? Yeah, I sure. can honestly say that that almost made this whole thing better because... Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. this, and this is why. It was so much going on. So imagine if a straight tornado was happening, right? Yep. And something hit you, like a steel ball hit you on the head. It's uh -huh. still a tornado happening, so it's kind of like this is a part of this crazy tornado I'm in. So that's kind of how I received that when, you know, my father passed during the middle of the quarantine. Because it was like, it was an unreal situation we were in now, because I've never been in the house this long, ever. I've never, you know, even been in this space mentally. So with happening with what was happening with my father um it was horrible of course and i was devastated and it was the worst thing happened in my life but i think it would have been worse if this happened maybe a year ago when life was mm -hmm. normal and i mm -hmm. think the fact that everything else was abnormal in life i was able to say okay this is a part of the crazy yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it was a part Connect of the crazy so even and again my grandfather died if my grandfather had died on his own a year mm -hmm. ago Mm -hmm. It would have been completely horrible, devastating, like, I, you know, just all of those things. But it happened mm -hmm. in the middle of the tornado. So right. it's like one of those things, like, you just get knocked with everything. And it's like, all right, what's, what's, yeah. what's next? You know, so mm -hmm. I can say that I took, that's how I tried to process it. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on now. These are just one of these crazy things that's happening right now. So it's, um, we have all different weird coping mechanisms. And that's, yeah, one, of yeah. them. that's one of them my coping mechanism mm -hmm. just you know this is what's happening right now because for real for real when you think about grief and loss grief isn't necessarily only tied to death because you have to think about it i all was these... just about to say that oh okay. that was gonna be my next thing okay. <laughs> yeah go ahead bro we here, here, here yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah all okay. these people even looking at this that may not have had a parent die or a father or whoever mm -hmm. died we're going through a very very tumultuous time in this country right now just in terms of the pandemic the civil unrest you name it mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that really can break you and you're grieving your normal life or what was before yep. this entire pandemic so even mm -hmm. i drove by i was going to the grocery store and i drove by you know a brunch spot i used to go to and i'm like man i remember you know i was turning up last year but you know you grieve your mm -hmm. former life so again we all need tools for grief because that's what we're all mm -hmm. doing. We're all in the same place on different levels. Yeah. We're all grieving mm -hmm. what, once, what, what once was. And again, mm -hmm. we have to find a new normal collectively because again, we don't know how the world's going to look after this whole thing is over. Right. And, and people, you know, of course, you know, use grief with death. And of course we, we understand why, but a lot of times we, we grieve the unknown or, yeah. or the possibility of the unknown. Like I remember, um, I remember in 2013, um, I was with I was with my mom. Literally, I was with her chilling, hanging out. I left, and she went her way. I, I went my way. 30 minutes later, I get a phone call, and you know, long story short, she had a brain aneurysm. I was like, "Dog, I was I was just I was just with her." You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, I think he. Let me see. Yo, let me see. Yep. All right. So we'll get them back. And the conversation was just getting good, so we'll get them back. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, by the way. Um, I hope it's been a, a um informative conversation so far. Um, you know, we just having more of these conversations. 
more of these type of talks, um, you know, between us men, you know, in our community, I think is incredible. So I hope that, uh, you know, it's making an impact and, you know, it's helping some people. There he is. There he is. Come on, man. Listen, <laughs> this New York electricity, man, it, it, it works sometimes you don't. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, like I was saying, like, um, so long story short, she was having a brain aneurysm. So, so she had a brain aneurysm. At the same time, my dad was in the hospital doing chemo. Mm. So... And I realized at that point in time in my life, I didn't know whether my mom was gonna live or die. And like your and like your mom goes in various and, and like your mom goes in various different places. You know what I'm saying? And you start to grieve the unknown. And some and, and sometimes you think that the worst may happen. As much as faith as you gotta, you know, it, no, no matter how much you pray, like you're human. Like I, I can't say that my mom didn't didn't go like, oh man, like. This this could be, I don't know, you know, like and and I, and and there was a point where I was grieving the unknown on both my dad and her part, and it was like every day, and it was daily, and I was just like, man, like this is heavy, and it felt heavy on my heart as if I already lost her, yeah, you know, um, and you know, thankfully, you know, she, you know, she's she's still here with us, but at the time. You go through that. You yeah. know, people grieve relationships. People grieve breakups. People grieve a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? That they consider um, loss. And that, and that could even be job or career or business that they open. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you put all of your life savings into this business that's, that's yours. And now it's gone. And I'm glad you now, said that. Mm -hmm. Because even in the middle of this pandemic, again, there's a lot of people that had like started businesses back in January yes. at Grand Lodge. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. COVID nineteen hit. All of that money they saved, invested, that whole life plan they had that had to mm -hmm. align with that business is now gone, at least temporarily. Mm -hmm. So there's grief associated with that, um, mm -hmm. grieving something that is no longer. Um, and even right. you know, going back to my dad, we had go plan on going on a trip this year. Um, mm -hmm. And we made those plans and we talked about it. And so that not happening, you also mm -hmm. believe that too, because you think about what could have been, how that trip would have been, what are the activities you guys would have gotten to. Yep. So it, it's on, it's so many levels of grief that even, so many. it's just something that you just have to start unpacking. You know, how does this and, feel? What does this make you feel? And that's why I'm really a big proponent of therapy because again, like I told you, I did more work on myself within the past four or five months than I've done in my entire life. So, wow. you know, amazing. It, it's, it's a constant continuum of trying to find the benefits and the positive of this whole thing. Because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, and you know this too, if we just talk about what's in front of us, which is my dad died, my grandfather mm -hmm. died, These we're mm -hmm. in the middle of a pandemic. It's so easy to talk about how horrible that is and how this is the worst thing in the world. But for right. me, the real test is me trying to find something in this that means something to me or something that what has this done to me and what has done for me? How's this helped mm -hmm. me? And what has this imparted into me? And me finding myself in terms of my spirituality and me really doing self work on myself is something that I really discovered throughout this process. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I, I do want to just to say is people have to stop shaming grief because there's, there's a part, uh, a good part of, of people who, say that you should be over this by a certain time yeah. or you know what i'm saying or that it's like what you said earlier oh well you know if you're not you know just always praying about it praying about it then you know what i mean then it's just like then you're not doing the right things but it's just like grief affects everybody completely different mm -hmm. and a lot of times we we grief shame a lot you know what i'm saying because somebody's still not over it when you think that they should be over it you know what i'm saying but it, it, it doesn't work that way it's different for different people. For some people, maybe it could be, you know, two or three years. For others, for somebody, it could be never ending. Yeah. But they just learn how to cope and manage it every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People go, oh, like, why? Like, why, like, why do you cry so much? Why do you this? You know, because, you know, when my mama died, and then that's when that happens. Yeah. It's like, when, yeah. when my mama died, you know, 
I, you know what, I had to man up and just do this and that. And then, and it's just like, yeah, dog, but, but that's you. Yeah. But that's not me. You grieve the way you need to grieve, and I need to, to grieve the way I need to grieve. And you have to respect that. And if you can't respect that, then, then we just can't rock like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? So, and that's I think crazy. it goes back to people subscribing their values to other people. It's like, mm -hmm. because I did this when my dad died, you should do that too when your dad, you know? So, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people, and it's subconscious, and I give people a lot of passes, you know, because I understand that people, they're not in control of our actions. A lot of people like operate on autopilot. So, you tell them that, you know, somebody died, they automatically have a response. Or, you know, mm -hmm. they see you respond in a way they automatically have a response because they're pulling that from their arsenal of emotions. So mm -hmm. it's really important, again, to not subscribe your own personal values to other people because I've seen that mm -hmm. so much throughout this process. And you got to remember, too, and you have siblings also, what brother also, um, mm -hmm. you know, with family members, even though we've all had the same experience, it's we different take it everybody. differently. We take mm -hmm. it differently because you have to remember, I have, I have four brothers, right? Right. One of them, you know, lived in the same state. Two of us, no, two of them lived in the same state. One of us mm -hmm. live in L.A. I live in New York. So we all are in different spaces. And even in terms of, you know, our engagement with my dad, it was in different ways because we live apart. So, you know, we all will have a different even experience, even expressing our grief or yeah. how that was. It might have hit me worse than all of them because of mm -hmm. whatever, you know. So we have to be real conscious and even people that you love not trying to rush that process or not trying to right say, oh you still right about that it's been a year oh it's been two years yeah you still you know so again oh shit it could be two or three four more so what you going listen, to listen right right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you know it, it, but it's weird though to compare grief because some people feel like their grief is is more you know it's more than yours and and there's just a weird also a, a weird way of people just trying to compare their griefs with somebody else's grief and it's like well 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 i grieve harder and it's just like this ain't the grief olympics man it's the grief like, olympics <laughs> yeah like i'm not trying to compare those things you know what i'm saying like like you grieve like i'm sure it's hard for you and my grief is gonna be hard for, for me and it doesn't mean that yours is, is, is harder than mine it doesn't mean that mine is, is harder than yours mm -hmm. it just means that we're both grieving and that's it two people grieving um ways in, in various different ways, right? Um, so I think that's super important to pull out as well, man. Um, but I do love this conversation, bro, because I feel like you're an example of men going to therapy. You know, I'm an example of men going to therapy, you know, and trying to change that mindset, you know, of of shaming therapy, especially in men, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like there's no shame in therapy. Um, it's like I said, it's not, it's not feminine. It's necessary. I have a question for you. Yeah. So when us as black men go through these things, mm -hmm. do you think there's a space for us to be weak or a space for us to grieve or a space for us to feel these emotions? Because even in my experience, um, and I'm going to just say this real quick before you answer, um, mm -hmm. even in my experience as being an adult, as a black man in this world, um, mm -hmm. There is very few times that, like, I've had in this pandemic that I even have time just to sit and think or sit and just, you know, abide. As a man, mm -hmm. you're taught to constantly go out there and get it, knock the wall mm -hmm. down, make it happen. Mm -hmm. You can't fold. But yep. when grief, which is a very real thing, happens, when you have a death of a parent, of a sibling, or anybody that's close to you, um, do you think that there's a space there for us to express whatever emotions we're experiencing or to express um, hurt, or to even, like I said, have our moment of grief? Um, I think the, to answer your question, there is a space, um, but you have to make the space. Okay. Because sometimes naturally, in a, a, a lot of men, it's not going to come naturally to, for them to just say, all right, you know what, I need to, to grieve, and I, I need to cry, or I need to go to therapy. You got to make the choice to make the space. Yeah. Or truthfully, life is going to make that space for you because you're going to break down. Mm-hmm physically and pe people don't understand like grief and strife and an emotion uh, if held all in here it's gonna come out one way or another and a lot of times if you don't make the space then at some point your body's gonna make the space for it and a lot of times you, you you're not gonna like how that comes out 
Yeah. Because, I mean, there's heart attacks. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there's strokes. There's brain aneurysms. Yeah. There's a lot of things that happen when like, when you hold stuff inside. And so life life is going to teach you one way or another that if you don't make the space yourself, it's going to make it for you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So so I, I think that it's not it, – it's a choice. Like, we have to start making the, the, the decision to say our mental health matters. Our emotional intelligence matters. Our emotional wellness matters to us. Mm -hmm. Not to anyone, not to society, not to the church, not to anybody, but, but it matters to me. Absolutely. And so I have to make the choice every day to make it a priority um, so that we can start seeing the change in our own community and our own people and our own men. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that's all a choice, you know, but they have to have models to see it. So when you so when you come out and, and you say, yo, I'm, I'm on it. I'm, I'm in therapy. Now somebody younger than you is looking at you that might look up to you and says, oh, I didn't think that was even a, a thing. Yeah, and and Jamal is manly, like he's successful, like he's doing different things, like and and he's doing it. So, wow. So so then maybe that's something that I could do too. Yeah, and and, and that's how you want to start just getting the the wheels turning, especially with our young men. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And changing this narrative, bro. And and even more so, just like what you're saying, stress manifests in physical ways, and you know, mm -hmm. like you know. They got the bubble guts. That's a, actually, that's a hormone. You know, it's a real thing. You know, like, yeah. yeah, come on, man. I care with you sometimes, bro. It's, it's, a, it's a hormone. You know, that's your stump. That's your, that's an actual physical response to stress, to grief, to different things that's happening. And I think people don't really identify the fact that when you're going through stress, when you're going through grief, when you're having these real human emotions, that's an actual, you have physical responses to that. So it's as true. a black men, we have to make sure that we are being mindful about the amount of stress we put ourselves under because you're going to have a physical response to that. Because in the physical and, response and that's true. is strokes, is high blood pressure, is heart attacks. It's all these things. So as black men, we have to be even mindful about the situations that we put ourselves in that might mm -hmm. trigger these responses that causes, you know, a, a oversurge of cortisol or you know just all these different hormones that mm -hmm. comes as a result of grief and of some type of stress uh yeah and that's true and you know i have a gastro and like one of the first things that he told me you know what i'm saying was listen stress comes from your gut and he was like if you stress a lot and he was like oh, when you get sick he said yo a lot of that it comes straight from the gut and you get sick Bubble and gut. i was like i mean he didn't say all that but but yeah <laughs> then you should have been a gastro, bro. I suppose the thing. <laughs> um, but it's so true, man. Um, so I guess my my question to to you is now, like now that you've experienced this, you know, this loss and this grief on such a high level, right? Um, so how can we get this message out, you know, to our young men and to everybody? You know, what I'm saying our queens too. You know, what I'm saying like. How can we change and shift this narrative um, of, yo, know, going to grief counseling, it's okay. Like dealing with it and unpacking it um, in a healthy way, you know, that it's okay. Like how can we change this narrative? So I think with anything, it's a graduated process, right? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a person, even, you know, a younger cousin of mine that's going through something that has a family or what have you, um, but I wouldn't have him go straight to therapy in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. I would open him up for conversation because the mm -hmm. thing is, you, you want somebody to go to therapy and the whole time they're like this, not wanting to speak to the therapist. That defeats the whole purpose. So mm -hmm. make sure that this person feels safe enough to speak on these things because, again, that's why mm -hmm. I said something about black men in particular because a lot of times mm -hmm. we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want people to know what's going on with us. We want to look like we can right. 100% of the time. And then later, you know, when we have high blood pressure we got diabetes or whatever the case is we try to figure out what's going on and it's really because we've held things in so long that this has mm -hmm. now become a physical manifestation of everything that we've held in so it's really mm -hmm. for me about starting the conversations having things like this right here letting people see two black strong men speak to each other about something that's real you know mm -hmm. you can't address your emotional space it's nothing yep. wrong with that you can mm -hmm. go there and again that's not saying that you know, you fly off your, you completely live off of the seat of your emotions. But again, of course, we have, we as men, we really have to identify our emotions and be in touch with them and know what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of times that's why serious and, and not even to divert the point but mm -hmm. um this is why a lot of times we have violence with men we have you know men mm -hmm. do things disrespecting each other or what have you because mm -hmm. again they don't know how to channel their emotions the nope. only emotion they might know is anger and i feel some type of way as opposed yep. to you know compassion kindness walking away mm -hmm. being pragmatic all these different things you can do but we don't know those things because we're trained in one specific way we see yep. anger, and that's the emotion we know how to express so again we need to just again having men like you having just strong black men being an imprint to these young men out here because they don't have anybody to tell them any different and the people right. that do tell them something they're not listening because they think oh that's my mom she whatever yep so having mm -hmm. people stand up guys out here just really putting the br young brothers on and just again put mm -hmm. them in the right direction yeah yeah and, it, and it's just also you know just just changing around like especially with men and our young boys teaching them as a young age that it's okay to communicate it, it's okay to express like yeah. like let me show you what love is like let me show you how to express you know what i'm saying your emotions in a healthy way you know what i'm saying because a lot of times men get criticized for not being able to communicate and to express by the time they're 30 but I'm like, yo, just, just because you got a pretty face don't mean he's, he's going to communicate and express nothing to you. Because yes. he was never told and he was never given the permission to even express himself as a young kid. Yeah. And so now you have a, a big 30-year-old that has 30 years worth of anger, depression, sadness, all types of toxic emotions. Like, that's all what's inside of him. And he was never given the permission to say that it was okay to express. So how can I express my emotions to you when I was never e even given the permission to say, hey, it's okay to do, right? Yeah. So we got to just change the, of the, of the narrative and change, especially within our young boys, so that they can start being able to express themselves in a, a healthy way. Because like you said, they're going to take it out in the streets. They're going to take it out on somebody's daughter, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And on themselves. Absolutely. Because the depression is real, too. You know what I'm saying? Suicide is real. So, you know, these are things that we got to start really just changing the narrative with our young people, man. Um, so somebody said, oh, Miss Lady J said the narrative about mental health as a whole needs to change. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you know, just what, what we just said. You know what I'm saying? And we can't expect, you know, somebody who's 30 years old to kind of just change automatically who they are overnight. <laughs> that's not going to work, you know what I'm saying? But we have to try to do a lot of reprogramming, of course, but that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But we got to do something different with our youth, you know what yeah. I'm saying, especially our, our young boys. But listen, bro, it's, you know, it's almost an hour, so oh, um, I told you. Fun, <laughs> yeah. um, we got to do something else together on something maybe a little bit more lighter. A um, lighter. But, <laughs> yeah, a, a good lighter, man. We got to have a different type of talk early. Listen, I hope I hope, you know, um, you guys enjoyed th this conversation. Um, I thought it was needed. And I just want to say, uh, again, I salute you, um, bro, because you're in the thick of this thing um, when it comes to, the, to this grief with losing your father um, just about four months ago and your grandfather last, last month, about a month ago. I salute you for having this, this conversation, bro. Um, it was definitely needed. We need more men like you. I, and uh, thank you for this, bro. I, I, I definitely do appreciate you, man, for real. And thank you so much, Terrence, seriously, for this platform, man, because these conversations are needed. Um, and you need somebody like you to really just step up and start the conversation. Um, a lot of times we don't know a lot of times. Like, we don't have anybody even to, just to hear this happening. And so the fact mm -hmm. that you even have this platform for all these different, just a lot of different things that we need to hear, you know, I, I really appreciate mm -hmm. you for it. And I definitely shot you out there. And I appreciate your transparency. And especially even, you know, going through my grief, this, this is personal. But, you know, yeah. my situation, you know, me and you talked on the phone and, you know, just, and it's an ongoing thing, brother. And I, so I appreciate yeah. it. Um, real quick before we go. Yeah, um, we got 27 seconds. Go ahead. All right, real quick. <laughs> um, everybody hit up Terps Official. It's T-E-R-P-Z Official. Um, check it out. That's my brother's line. We doing some black men mm -hmm. on the move. We making money. We doing this thing out here. Yes, I sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely, y'all. Check that out. Um, appreciate you, bro. Uh, again, thank, thank you. And let's do it again, bro. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. We, it's not over.